Hello and welcome to another video. Now, I'm not someone who usually jumps on trends because it kind of seems like they change overnight half the time and I'm just a big proponent of wearing whatever you like because who cares? But there is one trend recently that I've been really into and it is bows. That is one of my favorite trends that comes about in the fashion cycle is when something that is typically considered very childish like hearts or flowers or bows becomes something that's very chic and fashionable. And that's where I feel like we're at right now. So today I'm going to be adding bows to some existing clothes that I have as well as making a couple new pieces out of fabric that I already have to make my wardrobe a little bit more bowtiful. One of the first things that I saw that had to do with this trend that really gave me the inspiration to start trying to add more bows to my wardrobe was this trend of adding this like 2D bow effect on sweaters specifically and other clothing but to make it look like it's a real bow, but it's just stitched on. And that actually references back to a piece of fashion history that I just have to talk about. And it is this sweater right here. This is a sweater that was produced by designer Elsa Schiaparelli in the 1920s. She's one of my personal favorite designers because I love the Art Deco period in the 1920s. And so when I saw that this trend was coming back, it just made me think of her so much that I felt like I just needed to have it in my wardrobe. So what I'm doing is I have this heathered pink sweater that I'm gonna be adding my own bow on top of. So I'm gonna be using this white or kind of off-white yarn that I have to stitch a bow over top of the sweater here. I looked up some reference photos of bow drawings on Pinterest and I sketched out the shape that I wanted and where I wanted it with some chalk and started stitching. Part of the reason that I really love this bow motif as well is that it doesn't have to be perfect. If it's non-symmetrical, that's fine because that's how bows are in real life. And here it is all done. This really only took me a couple of hours and I really love it. It's such a simple way to make your garment new and fresh feeling without having to buy something new. So the next item that I want to make is a few different pairs of earrings. And I'll put in, these are some of my inspiration picks that I had. So I'm, I've got two different main kinds that I'm gonna be making. They're all bows though. I also saw some really cute pictures of necklaces that are in the same style using beading. I just don't wear necklaces a lot, so I don't really see myself wearing those. So I'm just gonna be making the earring form of it. But I think those would also be really cute. But we're gonna see how this goes. I haven't tried jewelry a lot. And when I do, I'm usually never good at it. So here we go. I never realized how difficult it was to film jewelry footage before this because everything is so small and you can't see what I'm doing at all. These first two pairs that I made, it's just some really fine ribbon that I tied into uniform bows. I singed the ends of with a lighter just to make sure they didn't fray. And then I just super glued them to a flat back earring and that's it. I really love how they turned out. These first pair are probably my favorite just because they're so dainty and adorable. I made a second pair with black and I actually held them double just to add a little bit of extra thickness to it and I really like how they turned out. I think these are really easy and probably anyone could make them. The second type of bow earring that I made using the seed beads is a little bit more difficult to explain. If you really like these and you would be interested in a tutorial video on how to make these, please let me know. I looked for one online and I was going to include it as a link on the video, but I really couldn't find anyone that used the same techniques that I did. So let me know if you'd like to learn how to make these. Now, one thing that was really exciting about making these was the tools that I got to use. I have a lot of random Barbie accessories that for all intents and purposes are completely useless, just cute to have. And there is one, which is this tiny little Barbie spatula that I actually have used as a tool in beading things because this box of beads that I have, the compartments are too small to get my needle into. And so I use this tiny little spatula to scoop them out and actually be able to pick the beads up off of. So some of my toys are useful. And here are my finished products. I really, really love them. I am surprised they turned out as well as they did. I think a lot of times when you're trying something new, it's very uncommon to have it actually look like how you envisioned. And I like them so much. I made a second pair in pink because of course I have to have something in pink and I'm equally as happy with them. And honestly, I might make them in more colors because of how much I like them.
So for the next project that I'm going to be doing in my bow themed wardrobe, I want to make a bag. So I saw many different versions of bags that integrated bows in some way and I really liked a lot of them. This was a hard decision, but my favorite that I chose is this one that's just kind of a basic tote bag and then the bow factor is these straps come up around to the shoulder and tie at the top and has this beautiful like drapey aspect to it. So that's what I'm gonna be making next. I've got my two different fabrics already picked out. First off is this uh, kind of cotton canvas uh, texture fabric, which I feel like already kind of feels like a tote bag. And I think I stole it from my mom's stash forever ago. So thanks mom. And then the one that I'm gonna pair with it is just this like lightweight regular cotton. I'm gonna line the bag with this and then this is what I'm gonna use to make the straps. I think using a more lightweight fabric is gonna be better because it'll kind of have more of that drapey aspect to it. So I went ahead and sewed the straps first, just because I want those to be done so I can have them ready when I'm connecting my bag parts. I made them pretty big because I wanna have like an oversized drapey shoulder aesthetic. So this is them finished. I did like an angled seam at the end and they're eight inches wide. Um, and then I folded in half, obviously made just a big tube out of. It's like about a yard and a half long, not quite. Um, but obviously I made two of those. So those are ready to go. Next up, I'm working on the lining. I decided to put some just lightweight interfacing on the bottom of the lining section here, just to give it a little bit of extra uh, sturdiness. But I have already sewed that to the body here. This is, I feel like a lot easier than it looks like. Um, I made the bottom round, so there's no messy little corners to fool around with. And then you just like sew a rectangular piece of fabric onto the bottom and now you have sort of a bag. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing with my outer fabric. Okay, outside bag is done. Um, I was also just thinking that this would be such a pretty fabric for a couch. So that makes me sad that that will never happen because it's, I'm pretty sure, pretty old fabric. I don't know how long it's been in my mom's stash, but I know it wasn't like within the last year that she has purchased it. Um, not to mention I had like a yard and a half of it. So whatever. But if you happen to have like 12 yards of this on hand, let me know. All I'm going to do now though is take outside of bag, right side out, inside of bag, wrong side out, and put them together. All right, she's inside. Now all I'm gonna do is just basically tuck these seams inside of one another so that you've got like a really nice finished edge. And then while I'm sewing around that, I'm also gonna put my straps on the sides. And then all I gotta do is tie the top and I've got a bag and I'm done. And here she is. I really like it. I will say, I wish I had made the ties even longer than I did. I feel like when I do stuff like this, the ties are always way too long and I get over ambitious about their length. But honestly, if I made this again, I'd probably make them an entire yard longer because I want them to be even drapier. My favorite way to actually style this bag is just in kind of a tied knot because that gives the length that I really wanted on the sides and I think it lays a little bit nicer overall. So this is kind of the length I wanted the straps to actually be. So if they had ended up being that length, I would really love it. And I would consider making another one 
just to create the final look that I was going for, but I still really like how this turned out. So for the next thing that I'm going to be adding bows to, it's actually from my pile. If you watched my last video about upcycling, I talked about how I just constantly kind of have a pile in my craft room of garments and things. You can probably kind of see it back there. Uh, of garments and things that need altered or fixed or just completely upcycle altogether. And the next thing I'm doing is out of the pile. So I'm actually taking out of it still. And it's a pair of jeans. I saw this picture on Instagram and I thought it was just so cute. And I've had these jeans sitting in my upcycling pile for probably about a year. And I'm not super excited to admit they're brand new. They have tags on them. It was something that I kind of impulse bought. I will say it. Um, I'll, I'll show you. Here's what they look like. They fit really nicely. I do really like them. I don't love the bottoms though. They've got this like slit down the sides and they're also really straight leg loose fit. And I really just don't like that. I kind of bought them because I just thought in the moment, oh, they're so cute and different, but it's just not what I wear. And so as soon as I got them home, I thought, why don't I just sew that slit up and I'll fix it. So for what I'm doing with them today, I'm going to be cropping them some because they're a little longer than what I usually like. And then I'm gonna be kind of tapering them in on the inseam, really just from like mid calf down, because I like that kind of slo uh, sloped tapered shape when you get close to the ankle. And then I'm gonna be adding some bows to it. And I've already got some ribbon. This is just like ofre satin uh, off-white or like ivory ribbon. It is left over from my wedding, actually. I have that very much like I could do that attitude and me and my best friend did all of our bouquets uh, for the wedding. She was in it, so she helped to make it. And this is what we used to wrap around the base of them. So I've got this and like, I think another whole spool left over just because I didn't really know how much I needed. So this one I'm gonna be using to make bows out of and I'm just gonna be stitching them onto the jeans themselves. So as a whole, I try not to buy new clothes or anything because I generally just kind of hate the fast fashion industry. But there are so many times that it just makes me shake my head how irritated I get at things that they do. One of which, and I don't mean to create an argument because I know that this is like contrasting opinions, but holes in jeans, they drive me crazy. And I'm not gonna sit here and say I've never worn or bought jeans with holes in them. I used to be really into them. But when I started making my own clothing and kind of realizing the value of a high quality garment and things like that, and also recognizing the ills of the fast fashion industry, it made me start to realize that jeans being one of the most durable pieces of clothing you can probably buy is something that you wouldn't really need to replace that often. So just take a moment and think, is the popularization of holes and distressing of jeans just so that they wear out faster and you have to replace them more often. It's the same concept with jeans not being made of 100% cotton. Cotton takes a long time to wear out. Spandex, synthetics, they don't. The only reason I bring this up is because I didn't even notice this. I was about to shorten these jeans. I've never worn them. They still have tags on them. They're already distressed on the bottom. This is like the easiest place for your jeans to get distressed already. Why? Why, why is this necessary? It's all just part of making you replace things faster. Stop buying jeans with holes in them. Sorry, that's my deep opinion. my leg and my face in the same camera frame. I am just pinning them on right now to see exactly where they're gonna lay. Um, I think I'm gonna make them smaller as they go up and I'm pretty much gonna have to hand stitch them on to make sure they're laying really nicely. But I think I'm just gonna do these three. It kind of stops like around my mid thigh, but I think that looks really nice. And I'm also going to sew this bottom one to match up or like for the ties to match up where my uh, slit hangs down so it'll like kind of play into that a little bit. <sighs> you know, I still think that this was a really cute idea, but I 
so did not realize how long this was going to take me. I spent an entire weekend hand sewing all six of these bows on because the satin was constantly puckering, so I had to be incredibly careful about my hand sewing. I think it turned out really well, I love it, but I don't know if I would ever do this again. So the last piece that I'm going to be making for this video and kind of my finale item, I first saw this picture. This is a Valentino dress that popped up on my Pinterest and I thought, this is magnificent. This is great. I loved it. I think it's so classic and chic, but also has some very cute bows on it. And so I wanted to make this kind of in my own version, my own style, but I don't really have any black and white fabric. I thought about for a long time going and buying some, which I've been trying not to do and I haven't bought fabric in a long time and I almost did I really considered it but I went digging through my stash and I found something so this is a fabric I got at a thrift store at least a couple years ago it's something that's already been used like cut into um that was left over from somebody else's project I would say there's two different pieces the biggest one's probably about two yards maybe a little bit over but it is this beautiful tweed fabric it is like actually a woven fabric and it's very nice feeling and it's all my favorite colors in one so I pulled this out and I thought I could work with this like this has a similar look to it now I don't have a ton of ribbon I have almost used every type of ribbon that I own for this video already just because I don't I don't find myself using it a lot so I don't really buy it I have a couple of velvet ribbons that I didn't get out which maybe I'll uh continue to come up with ideas for things but for this nothing really matched and so I didn't know what to do well I realized I've got a second stash of supplies and it's all my yarn and so I went going through my yarn and I found this one it's kind of like a medium weight uh cotton blend yarn it's actually one I dyed myself when I was just like practicing with some dyes but it's it's just a regular like cotton blend yarn but I found a video online for how to knit an I-cord, which I'll link in the description because it's a really helpful video. But I had never knit I-cord before, just like by itself. And wow, it is so easy. I genuinely think if you've ever knit before, or even if you're learning to knit, you could probably still knit an I-cord. But I made these little pink bows. I have four of them all together. I kind of did some prep for this video because this took me a couple hours to knit all these. But... I knit four of these little bows because I just thought this pink matched so nicely but also like really popped because that's what I was looking for in this. I wanted a fabric and a bow that was going to complement each other like the black and white had in that picture but also contrast enough to make those bows like really visible and I just felt like that was perfect. It's perfect. So you're probably not going to be shocked to hear I'm going to be making a skirt version of this and I'm going to be making a midi length but I'm still gonna have the same kind of slit detail in it. Now, a lot of people ask me really frequently, it's probably the most common comment that I've gotten recently is like, you don't explain what you do or how you do it. Well, the truth is I don't really know what I'm doing half the time and I kind of just eyeball stuff. For this skirt, I started out getting some basic measurements for how I wanted this to fit. And then all I did was cut two big rectangles and I made them about an inch wider than what I wanted them to be and about two inches longer to allow for the waistband and the hem and then I sewed the one side together and sewed the one side like halfway together and then hemmed it hand sewed my bows on and added a waistband with a couple pleats and a little bit of elastic in the back I'm sorry that's my best description of what I did I just kind of eyeball stuff that often doesn't work out great and I often make mistakes but that's how you learn and how you get better and that's kind of how I've gotten to where I am so hopefully that was a somewhat decent description and here she is finished I hand sewed the bows down but I did leave the little ties loose just to add a little bit more movement to it all except for the very bottom one, I stitched it down along the edges of the slit because I thought that would add a little extra fun detail to it. 
Well, that is where I'm gonna wrap it up for today's video. I had a lot of fun doing this, having kind of a theme to the things I was making. So if you uh, like this, let me know. I honestly had a lot of other ideas and a lot of additional things pinned. So if we wanna see more bows, I've got more ideas. I just felt like this was gonna be a good length of video with this many things. So thanks so much for being here and watching and I'll see you back here again sometime soon.